Hey everyone and welcome back for part 3 of my tutorial series on how to create cinematic movies using Unreal Engine 5. In the previous parts we've created a simple 3D scene and then we've created a level sequence to add camera actors and add some animation to create an actual cinematic sequence. I'm going to drop you the links to the full tutorial series down below so go and check that out if you've missed the first few parts. In this part we're going to cover how to export that level sequence into an actual movie file that you can then share with friends, family or have them judged by random strangers on the internet. Working with Unreal Engine, as well as any other technical creative tool, often ends up being a lot of problem solving. An excellent way to improve your problem solving skills, but also your understanding of math, data and computer science in a fun and interactive way is with Brilliant, who are also kindly sponsoring this video. Brilliant is a fantastic online platform that offers a ton of engaging courses, all broken down into small step-by-step -step lessons that you can watch in 5 minute bites or just binge your way through, no matter how busy your life is. They have courses on algebra, mathematical thinking, programming and computer science, logic puzzles, AI, neural networks, how everyday technology works and much, much more. And there's new courses being added every month. I've personally really been enjoying their courses on different types of logic puzzles. I come from a technical background. My day job is all about problem solving. And I really like challenging my brain with problems that force me to look at things from different angles. Plus, I actually really enjoy that feeling of achievement I get from solving yet another puzzle. Brilliant is the best way to improve your understanding of math, data and computer science. And as you go through these courses, Brilliant automatically adjusts the content to fit your personal skill level so it feels like you're always learning at just the right pace. If this sounds like something up your alley and you'd like to join me on this exciting journey to prevent my brain from going to mush, you can head over to brilliant.org forward slash surfaced studio or just jump through the link down in the video description and you'll get completely free access to the 30 day trial so you can try out all of their amazing courses for yourself. And the first 200 subscribers to Brilliant that go through that link will get 20% off their premium annual subscription forever. Thank you very much Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Here we are back in Unreal Engine and if you haven't already, be sure to open up your master level sequence. This sequence contains our two shots with their respective animation and cameras. And if you lock your viewport to the shots track, you can see what this animation will look like from the point of view of the camera. And this is what the sequence looked like when we've rendered it out into a movie file. In order to export your level sequence, simply come to the top bar in the sequencer panel and click on this clapboard icon here that says render this movie to a video or image frame sequence. This will open up the movie render queue. Over on the right side, you'll find the settings for this render pipeline. It has a job name as well as the sequence that is actually going to be exported as part of this job. It also shows you the map that is being used in that level sequence as well as some additional metadata that we won't worry about for now. On the left hand side, let's expand the twirly for our master job. And you can see that in here, we're actually exporting both our shots, shot one and shot two. And we're going to render it from the perspective of the cine camera actor. In the output column, you can see where your movie is going to be rendered out to. And you can actually click on this and it'll actually open the folder on your computer. Right now it's empty because we haven't actually rendered our sequence out just yet. And then under settings, you'll see it currently says unsaved config. Let's click on this to open up the configuration settings. And in here, you can define any number of different exports, which is the format that that level sequence will be rendered out into. Right now, all we have is a JPEG sequence, which doesn't actually have any options for us to configure. Under rendering, you'll add all of your different options for how you want the movie to be rendered out. There's already an option for deferred rendering in here. And when you select it on the right hand side, you can see there's a whole bunch of different options. I'm not going to go into these ones. I'll link you down to the docker if you want to find out what all of them do. If you're just getting started, just leave them on default and you'll be fine. And finally, you can add a whole bunch of different settings that change how this movie is rendered out. Right now, the only setting we have to find is this output setting here. And in the options over on the right hand side, you'll be able to change your output directory or the file format name or the resolution or the frame rate. You can overwrite this with the custom frame rate if you want to. But I'm just going to leave this on 24 frames per second, which is the standard for cinematic film. And then again, just leave the rest on default for now. Now, while these default settings are great to get you started, this will render out a JPEG sequence and I actually want an actual movie file. So for that, let's come up into the top left hand side of the configuration dialog and click on plus setting. And in here, you'll either be able to add setting options, export options or rendering options. For now, under the exports category, let's select Apple ProRes 10 to 12 bit. This will add this export format to our export options. And over on the right hand side, you can change the codec. And these are professional quality codecs. So the video file size tends to be pretty large. The one I like to select is Apple ProRes 422, which is kind of a nice balance between quality and file size. And with this setup, I don't actually need the JPEG sequence. So over on the left hand side, simply click this yellow toggle to disable the JPEG sequence being exported. So all we'll export is our Apple ProRes file. 
But before we get to exporting, let's add a few settings to improve the quality of our final render. So let's come up to plus setting again. And this time, let's select the anti-aliasing option. Anti-aliasing reduces the sharpness of edges in your final render and you can increase the sample count. Well, again, I'm just going to leave this on default. Just be aware that the higher you jack up your quality values and parameters, rendering will simply take more time. But I do want to add a few other options. So let's come into plus setting again. And there aren't actually any detailed breakdowns of some of the settings I want to change. So a lot of the configuration for your rendering queue in Unreal Engine actually happens via console variables. So let's add the console variables setting to our render config. And this is going to be a little bit more technical, but don't worry, it's really not that complicated. Over on the right-hand side, I now want to add some console variables. So on the right-hand side, I'm simply going to click on this plus icon to add an element. That's going to give me a row to enter a name for a console variable. And in here, I'm going to type r.motionblurquality, which sets the motion blur quality of the final render. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to set the value to 4. Then let's add another element. This time, I'm going to type r.blueQuality. I'm going to set that to 5. Let's hit plus again. This time I'm going to R tone mapper dot quality. This option I'm going to set to five. Let's add another one for our depth of field quality. And I'm going to set this to four. Let's add yet another one, our ray tracing dot global illumination. And let's set that to one to force global illumination on. Now, some of these overlap with your project settings. And I'm also going to link you an article and drop you some recommended console variables down in the video description. So just check all of that out. And obviously, be free to tweak this or experiment and play around with the settings. There's a humongous amount of stuff that you can configure and change using console variables in Unreal Engine. Let's add one more for r dot ray tracing dot global illumination dot max bounces. And let's set that to two. And I think that was enough tinkering for now. Let's come to the bottom right hand side and click on accept. And before we render this out, do note that our config still says unsaved config with a star. And in this little drop down here on the right hand side, I can't actually select my configuration file just yet because we haven't actually saved it. So let's click into our configuration one more time over on the top right hand side, let's click on this unsaved config drop down here and let's select to save preset. Let's give this preset a useful name like render settings underscore basic video. Hit save, hit accept. And now the settings name has changed to render settings underscore basic video. And in this drop down, you can actually now select it and apply it. So that makes it much easier when you're rendering out different sequences to apply the same settings once you've got everything configured and saved off. Now let's finally render this out. And at the bottom right hand side of the movie render queue, you will find two render buttons. There's render local and render remote. Render local will essentially pop up a preview window so you can watch your movie being rendered out, but it will also block you from working with Unreal Engine. Render remote will render the movie out in a separate process. So you won't get a preview, but you will be able to just continue working within Unreal Engine while rendering is happening in the background. For now, let's keep it simple and simply hit render local. Unreal Engine will compile any shaders it might need for the render, and then it will render out our master level sequence into the actual Apple ProRes movie file. Once that's done, let's come into our output directory, and in here you'll now find your master MOV movie file, which if you double click on this and play it back, contains our cinematic movie sequence rendered out from Unreal Engine. And if you do prefer an image sequence, you can simply come back into the render settings, re-enable JPEG sequence, hit accept, hit render local, let's render this out one more time. And if you now jump into the output folder, you'll also find a JPEG image sequence here for the full render of your cinematic level sequence. The process is pretty straightforward and there's tons and tons of different options to configure the render settings to render out your cinematic movie sequence in the exact format that you need. And that is all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel and I greatly appreciate it. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down below the video. And with that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.